No? Okay. Great. Um, so no fancy introduction. We're just going to get started here. I'm Mark Fisher. I'm with uh, Quilt. I'm responsible for marketing and business development there. So I'm, I want to take a few minutes and um, take you back to the edge, as the intro suggests. Um, this is sort of going to be a, a bit of a retro piece going back to the edge, but I, I think as we progress, you'll get an understanding of, of how we see some things developing uh, across the CDN ecosystem, across the sort of end-to-end -end delivery ecosystem for streaming. Um, but to get there, we'll, we'll just sort of start at a, a bit of a, a higher order. I presented a little bit of this the last time I was here last year, um, and it's, it's more true now than ever. So let's talk a minute about transformation, a very quick minute, and then I'm going to bring it home to something that uh, I think is a little more relevant directly to this audience. But uh, transformation is, is all around us. You can see it here in you know, any number of areas. Um, I've told my kids already that they're going to have the awkward task of explaining to their children, or their grandchildren perhaps, why anyone owned a car or a vehicle of any kind um, back in the old days. Uh, because that's just going to, we probably understand, just, just go away as a result of, of transformation. Um, if you follow any of these categories, I'm not going to go into them, each one has its own story. And if you look at all of history, we're compressing into these few decades of time extraordinary once-in-a-lifetime transformation that will change the world in ways we probably can't fully understand. Um, it's an amazing thing to be part of. If you've ever read anything from Elon Musk, he's the guy on the bottom right. He's got this task to back up humanity on Mars, incredibly. And he's serious. This is not a joke. He's really aiming to do this very thing. Um, so uh, it is extraordinary how fast these things happen now, the cycle times of this. You know, they say the cognitive rev revolution was 500 years time, the last 500 years. But it's really the only last 50 that you can see the acceleration. And as you look across these kinds of areas of transformation, um, we see this increasing. It's kind of an exciting place to be. And so let's kind of bring it home now. Uh, as I said, I was going to take you back to the edge. Um, we see a transformation now in how content is being delivered. And, and more broadly, we see a transformation in uh, what we'll call generally edge computing. And now I think more tracks today throughout this week will have that as the tagline that gets you in, in theory, to listen. What is happening with edge computing? How is that trend taking off in a way that makes sense? And how does that reconcile with everything else we've seen in terms of cloud computing and so on? We have a particular view on this. And you don't have to believe me. This, this guy, uh, Peter Levine and Andreessen Horowitz, has got a brilliant uh, video on this. If you have 15 minutes to listen to him, maybe it's 20. Um, and in, in short, he's sort of saying we're going back to the future. Things sometimes in fashion return to days gone by like bell bottoms, I suppose. But in this case, it's really kind of a fascinating journey from you know, way back to mainframe to client server to cloud. And now what we, and this is the part that I think is relevant for this group, what we're seeing more of as the role of edge computing, or really more specifically, the edge cloud in the overall scheme of content delivery. So that's where we're going to zero in. Um, we now, it's, of course, it's any good VC's job to pronounce the death of one thing so that you'll believe in the life of the next thing that he wants to pitch. But I think there is a, a, a fascinating truth here. Um, it makes a lot of sense to us. Uh, but as we look at it, uh, there's another way to kind of frame this that hopefully will then bring it home to you as well. We've lived through the Gen Y. My kids love it, the idea that I'm even picking on generations here. But the Gen Y delivery, when you know, things like Blockbuster uh, were real, that seems incredibly long ago that anyone here would have ever gone to a Blockbuster. Uh, but it happened, and I'm sure most of you are guilty. We then moved to this sort of you know, um, deep, I'll call it the deep cloud to draw this distinction, the deep cloud phase uh, when we could stream from Netflix. And we would depend, we now all do, no doubt, depend on deep cloud services on a scale that's really almost impossible to comprehend. What, what Amazon Web has done, what Google, you heard the keynote this morning, has done, what Microsoft is doing. Uh, but we think there's room for, and now, an extension of this journey that takes us to the, the edge. Um, and there's reasons for it. There's, there are applications, we're going to see these in just a moment, who depend on the scale, the bandwidth, 
the capacity and the low latency to come to life. Uh, we believe this, it, it, we're not alone in this view, uh, but this creates a role for service providers and by indirection, it creates implications for the, the content uh, delivery networks. So what are the requirements of these apps? I mentioned bandwidth already. We've got two broad boxes we need to check to make these apps work. One is capacity, bandwidth, which is what everyone in the room here is about. The other one is latency, which you care about deeply as well. Uh, but look at this progression. This was, um, came out of Cisco VNI, but it was also used by uh, Hong Kong Telecom recently because they announced a gigabit service to the home. Um, and when you think of, you can even discount these numbers by half if you like, or even more. It doesn't matter. If you think that there's room in, in our world, in, our, in, in your day in your life or your kids, for these kinds of things, 360 degree video, AR, VR, and so on, uh, even just simply 4K streaming, they will drive extraordinary needs for capacity. And that's not, solving this problem alone is not sufficient. Um, what we need to do then is look beyond it and look at what, what we call now, what we're calling in Quilt, the 20 millisecond zone. You may have seen our ad in the program. Uh, let's call it the red zone for a minute. Um, the zone in which these apps, this is work done by um, what is now Nokia Bell Labs, what was AT&T Bell Labs, that says, look, for, for these apps, uh, you know, VR, cloud-assisted driving, AR, 4K video, uh, other kinds of high-res interactive applications, they need a latency, um, they, need, they need latency performance that's sort of inside the 20 millisecond zone. You've got to be within, let's say, less than 10 milliseconds to the user uh, if you're going to have any hope of seeing these apps materialize. So we have now, if you will, set the stage that says that this demand for these applications is coming. Um, they need two things. They need substantial capacity and they need low latency, extremely low latency, like humbling latency in terms of how low it is. We here in the U.S. may think this is a piece of cake. You can may, maybe most of the CDNs in the room would say, look, I do that every day here in the U.S. That may or may not be true, but if you look worldwide at what we're trying to enable, this is a, it's a, it's a huge, monumental engineering problem. So to this we bring the Edge Cloud opportunity, which I'm going to outline here um, in kind of its components, but the simple, simplest uh, distillation of this is to say we're going to really leverage the last mile service providers, whether they're the fixed broadband telcos, the mobile telcos, the cable companies with their fixed broadband offerings. We're going to have them deploy, and they're already leaning into this, uh, right, because they see the opportunity coming. We're going to help enable the edge cloud within these networks through this massively deployed, uh, dist distributed, a common compute store in the last mile. Think about that as like down the street, um, not at the peering point at the top of the network that maybe some of you are used to seeing the, the ISP, but in every market, in every neighborhood, let's say, in every RAN, every tower, every e -node B would have in it integrated a cache. And by doing so, we have this uh, scale, which is extraordinary. Um, we have an open API to the upstream CDNs, so now there's a, me there's a means by which to reach that, I'll call it a content delivery ne network or a platform inside the ISP network, so you can make a call, you can delegate delivery to one of these nodes that happens to be down the street from the user who just requested your content. Um, and we're now in an ability to, to have this common compute start to really flex over the course of uh, a day, a week, a, a season of football maybe, and match resources to the applications in the moment. I'm talking mostly about video delivery and content delivery, but there's plenty of other applications, as I mentioned earlier. We'll look at a couple in a moment, too, IoT and other things that maybe we can't even conceive of at the moment. So this, this is the architecture for the Open Edge Cloud. It invokes the support of the service providers, the last mile networks, in a way that we believe they've never been invoked before, but it's the right architectural solution. At the bottom, you have a universal uh, content delivery platform that's available for any upstream CDN. Uh, it's not devoted to a particular content provider. No one's debating, I think, uh, although maybe there'll be a question at the end that does, but no one's debating the, the, the truth in this architecture because everybody knocks on the door of, let's say, Comcast. Uh, everybody, by that I mean uh, Facebook, Google, Netflix, Akamai even, the list goes on and on, and says, uh, hey, here's my cache. Look, it's uh, free. 
why don't you put your network as deep as you can and it'll deliver my content and life is better. What's, what's not to like about that solution? Well, this doesn't really scale, especially when you want to distribute this into every neighborhood because now you have confined space. Now there's no need to put a content specific cache in that location if as a ecosystem, as an industry, we can agree on a universal open cache that can be leveraged by everyone. Just, just as we today expect the service provider, be they fixed broadband or wireless broadband, to deliver that broadband service upstream so that it can carry the traffic you're handing off into that peering point or maybe into your cache which is located at the, the very top of the network just as we do that today because that's the scale solution for a huge problem we, we should do the same thing tomorrow with content delivery. We should invoke the service provider as part of the content delivery ecosystem um, and in doing so there's some benefits that accrue. Let me um, let me mention those briefly. So I'll, I'll, I'll put them here just in quick form and then talk about them each for a moment. And this is, of course, where I want your interaction because if this is meaningful to you, then we're, we're, on a good we're at a good place. If not, we need to talk. But uh, I see this as just sort of four things simply put. Why would it make sense for a CDN to invoke or leverage this kind of infrastructure? Because there's going to be capacity there that can be useful, that the cost of access to that <coughs> network infrastructure is going to be, I'll say, on a unit basis, at the margin, you know, at the edge, uh, better than often what can be um, acquired or built today. Uh, again, this is going to the scale player and it's a shared resource. Um, it's going to deliver at a quality that's going to be at or better than is possible um, without that, that infrastructure. And furthermore, it's going to enable these new applications I've mentioned uh, that might otherwise not actually work. Um, so there's, there's space now, you, I hope as you've been following me, there's space here for the notion of the edge cloud, the idea that the service providers are in the right place at the right moment to build that cloud, create that scaled infrastructure, and it makes sense that they do it because few have the reach and the depth uh, to manage this kind of scaled infrastructure when compared to the, the classic service providers that we're, we're working with. And we've had now a lot of experience at Quilt deploying our software to run on these uh, common compute platforms and to do the tasks that I've been describing. Uh, it works, it works nicely. And um, this is clearly uh, the opportunity that's, that's crystallizing for service providers. And it's equally important, you can imagine, for us to come to uh, venues like this to talk to this kind of audience because it's critically important that the CDNs see equally the value uh, and, and convince themselves to move forward and take advantage of it. We've already had some success on that front with commercial CDNs. Um, we want to see more of that, certainly. So uh, looking at each of these, um, I, there was a, you may have heard a year ago that uh, Yahoo uh, kind of a sponsored this streaming event uh, for a football game in the fall. It turned out to be not to be a big deal football game because it was being played in London on Sunday morning, the East Coast at 9 a.m., uh, and the teams, uh, hopefully no one's here from Buffalo or Jacksonville, but the teams weren't that great. Nevertheless, it was an interesting exercise because we talked to the team at Yahoo that helped run this. They did a brilliant job of it, but at early, in the early going, what, what did they do? Engineering went to marketing and said, hey, well, how much capacity, how many people do you expect to watch this thing, to stream it? Okay, let's turn that into an estimate of capacity. Let's go out and secure the, the capacity we need to deliver on that. Worldwide, most of it in the US, but worldwide. And at least in the first pass, marketing gave them such a big number that as, as, as the Yahoo team went out to secure that capacity, it wasn't there. They couldn't find the capacity they needed to support the event. Now, these things converged in such a way that it worked out, so it wasn't a, a disaster. And marketing, as they often do, probably overshot the, the estimates that they had. It doesn't matter. That was Sunday morning at 9 for a game in London, if we wanted to do something like this or insert your favorite sport, the NBA, baseball, the World Cup, the Olympics, to do that consistently every day for Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night, Saturday, it's an extraordinary task and this, this is in fact the very goal we have here, I think. Certainly the goal we want to see is to be able to do these just like with the same quality as broadcast television and the same frequency and reliability. So this is just the new normal. And, and we have a long ways to go. But the capacity that I described earlier inside of this edge cloud model 
is going to take us there because the as you can imagine now it's a universal cache or universal edge delivery platform that's set to on Monday night handle Monday night football uh, as you move through the week it's going to take the next big event the season finale of Game of Thrones for example and and so on and you know one day it's going to deliver the one other day during the week, it's going to deliver all the Apple iOS updates or Windows updates. Whatever it may be, it doesn't really matter because now we have a content delivery platform that can scale uh, to do this well. So now um, the next part of this, remember my, my short list of four reasons why. The impact on cost itself. Maybe this is even more important than the capacity you get because uh, capacity only matters at what price. And so our view of this, and I'm going to simplify because we're not in a position to talk for the ISPs who are investing in this, in this infrastructure. But the view of this is this, gonna, this is going to appear as at or less than the typical peering cost arrangement, maybe some other co-location arrangement you have today. So I, I'm saying this uh, in, a, in a, trying to say this in a simple way. The, the, certainly the spirit of this and the notion of it is that it's going to be less costly to access this delivery infrastructure than it is today to just ship all your traffic through brute force into the various peering and transit locations you may have established, the colo spots you've established with an ISP. We're absolutely convinced of this. Why? Because you can imagine if you're sitting on the ISP side of this, and now we've created a content delivery platform massively distributed across your network, so now I can deliver more than half of the traffic from the edge. There is a huge business case very attractive business case for a very big ISP. This could be over four or five years, a billion dollars in savings because now they build a smaller, smarter network, less internal network infrastructure because they're not carrying all those redundant streams across their network. They're delivering in a smart way. By the way, this is exactly what you do today as CDNs is you deliver from the edge. Uh, in this case, maybe the edge you have in mind is the edge that is at the top of the network for these ISPs, but nevertheless, you distribute content delivery. It's not a centralized event. Um, so th there, you'll notice I didn't put numbers against this. That existed before, but, but the numbers could create lots of controversy. But the, the direction, the essence of the difference that a day makes in this transformation, if we push content delivery deep into the ISP network, is going to make a difference. We already have some, some business case numbers on this for the CDNs, uh, a very good, m meaningful material difference in margins uh, for CDNs and content delivery. Last bit, uh, actually two more points. The last, second to last is the idea of quality. This measure, um, without naming the networks and, and getting into too much detail, uh, here is where we took simple measurements that said, what's time to first bite? When we have a chance, the edge cloud or that universal edge delivery platform has a chance to deliver from within the ISP network as compared to when delivery takes place from the next upstream entity, the CDN, the commercial CDN in this case. Um, it could be a commercial CDN. It could be a private content provider CDN, obviously, because there's plenty of those. You, you heard from Google earlier and Facebook and Netflix. Um, but, but this is just like a, a quick way to capture, at least visually, the simple notion, which I'm sure everyone here already agrees to, which is closer is better. If I'm closer by a measurable, measurable amount, uh, I, I have an unfair advantage of creating a better quality experience for whoever is consuming content. And that's at the heart of the numbers you see here. But it's always nice to see these borne out in sort of real terms. Um, we can replicate this around the world where we're deployed across all of it. You can imagine across Asia, Latin America. We're now selling in, in some volume in India, uh, Europe. It doesn't matter. The, the same fundamental truth. Uh, is true. The magnitude of the improvement changes, obviously. And in the US, it's a very efficient market. But it doesn't mean we can't get this kind of improvement there as well. Um, the last bit is the, uh, the point of the new apps that I mentioned earlier, kind of ending here. Um, but we, we have the data that I showed you earlier from thoughtful people like those at Bell Labs uh, that says, if you want to have these kinds of apps run, in scale, at quality, you really need to invoke an edge compute or edge cloud model to make that happen. Now, edge cloud and edge computing have a br it's a broad banner, and it includes things that might be happening in the enterprise. Uh, you know, going forward, every car will be a data center. There'll be edge computing happening there. Um, our focus here, as as we've said, is more around content media delivery, in particular, streaming, streaming video. 
uh, in all of its forms. But uh, we're, we're convinced that uh, the opportunity for the um, edge cloud is real, and we're seeing ISPs start to build now. Two points of that momentum uh, for, before I wrap up. One is we're a founding member of the Streaming Video Alliance. There's some roughly 50 member com companies now. Uh, we kicked off in January trials of open caching, which is a working group that we chair in the alliance. Um, and those have moved along well. You can see the participation. We've got capture the imagination of a number of people whose infrastructure, whose cooperation is paramount. It's crucial to making this happen. And just keep in mind, all of these trials aren't around some of the future apps I've mentioned. They're really a, around scaling the delivery of and the quality of content uh, delivery today. Uh, and just to make the point, I'm going to move through this kind of quickly, to make the point on the, um, how, this, how this impacts CDNs or the implications for CDNs, this working group in the Streaming Video Alliance has now approved and published the, the work streams, I'll call them, that determine how CDNs can access this infrastructure, whether it's from the provisioning service, how, to, um, how discovery takes place, the actual delegation from request routing, the logging reporting that goes with this, uh, and then the management of content. So you're really going to be able to, as a CDN, you'll look into the ISP through these APIs and see a full function content delivery platform that's going to behave just like it's one of your own edge nodes that you've placed smartly and inside of a, <laughs> deep inside an ISP network that's now available for, for your use and can, from which you can get the kind of performance you would expect from your own infrastructure. This leverage has to be accompanied by the rigor that's shown here and that's in the depth of the documents that we've already approved and, and published so that you know exactly what you're getting when you start the delegation to these edge nodes. So with that, uh, we've coined the term to own the zone. Um, Hopefully this has been uh, enlightening. I think we welcome the participation of the ecosystem. We uh, obviously I'd be happy to take some questions, uh, but the thing that you know, is really top of mind for us now is to help engage with more of the CDN community so that you can kind of become an active participant in using the infrastructure. This really is, in our view, inevitable, um, uh, and it's the future of content delivery. Thank you. Happy to take a question or two if there's time which I don't know if there's time. <laughs> Any questions? Excellent. Thank you very much. Enjoy the day.